So in, in this hour, what we are going to do is at least start doing this exercise. So we can start from the code we developed last week that is already on GitHub. It's already in week five, in the week five folder in the repository, and that's this dynamic behavior. What does it mean? It means that instead of, instead of having everything static, added here statically, fixed in the page, uh, we are going to generate this list dynamically from JavaScript. And uh, if we have time, otherwise I will put a solution online. We also have this delete button working. So when we press this, the line, the row associated to it will be deleted as this button should do. Hmm? So two things. Let's, we need to do three things. First one, we need to empty the HTML of this table. The second thing is we need to generate this table from uh, JavaScript, manipulating the DOM, and adding it back to the page. And third, then we need to add an event listener to the delete button to actually delete the row that is associated to each button. Hmm? So clearly, we don't want to press the first button and delete the third row. We want to press the first button and delete the first row. And so each button should delete its own row in the table. Hmm? And then if we refresh the page, even if we delete everything, if we refresh the, the page, we start from scratch. Because there is no persistence on this. It's just, let's build a table, let's delete the row, and then if we start again, we will have the entire table back. Hmm? And this is expected, this is normal. So how we can do it? So first of all, uh, do you see smaller, bigger? It's good, especially the one in the back, okay. Uh, so what do we need to do? Well, we need, first of all, to get rid of all of these. All of these is we don't need anymore because we, we want to generate the table automatically. So let me select all the TR in this table and let me cut that, not remove directly, just cut that. Hmm? So that we have just the table body empty. Why the table body? Why we don't remove the entire table? Why we don't remove it? This is a question for you. Why we don't remove the entire table, just the table body? Yeah, we, 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 we want to, to keep the header of the table. We don't want to regenerate the table, the header of the table every time because it's fixed. And so we just want to, to delete the content, delete the content. And we can also keep this last row, actually. The input row, we can leave the input row here. Well, it's the same, actually, okay. But oh, if we want, we can... Uh, uh, con control Z, too much. Um, but if we want, we could also keep the last line, but it, because it's, st it's still static, we, we are not going to, to do anything with that. Uh, with that line, actually. Hmm. Um, so we can save this. And if we refresh the page, we see that now we have the table empty. Hmm. So we are going to fill this table via JavaScript. So which is, and if we open the, back the exercise, you tell, it tell you that each exam in JavaScript is represented as course code, course name, credit, score, and pass date. So exactly the same structure, is not coincidentally, but exactly the same structure that we had in the past with our construction function. So we can either copy and paste that, that code or we can build our exam object and our uh, probably 
exam list like we did in the previous weeks. Mm? So let's start with building the object. Mm? So we need to have a, a construction function mm, that we can call exam, as in the past, that has code, uh, name, credits, date, score, and load, that default to false. And this is everything that we already did in, in the past. So nothing really uh, strange, this dot code, equal code, this dot name, equal name, it's a constructor, this dot credits, equal credits, this dot date, equal DJS date, etc. Same old. And we can also have our exam list, like we did in the past, to keep the coherence with, like, with what we did in the past. And here we are not going to have um, all the methods that we had in the past, because here we have a way simpler table Mm. Uh, we just have this list, this inner list that is empty in this moment. Mm. Then we are going to fill it, fill out the, the list and we'll create some methods. Mm. So nothing strange up to now, right? Is there one thing actually that is different or missing? Exactly, the import of the AJS. We cannot write require the JS here. We cannot do that. We cannot do that for two reasons. First, because the require is for Node.js. And here we are not in Node.js. We are in the browser. That's the first thing. The second thing is that even if we are in a browser and there is the equivalent of require, actually we cannot import, and the equivalent is import, we cannot import the JS because importing things needs a server that provides the page. So it needs that the page is published on HTTP or HTTPS. And in our case, is, is file. It's just a file opened. So we, we cannot use that. We, we also probably need a, a full project with NPM, etc. But we, we, we don't have that. And we don't want that in this moment. So how we can import the JS? We can import the JS like we imported it. We're like we imported JavaScript, Bootstrap JavaScript. How did we import JavaScript from Bootstrap? In the HTML file, if you remember, we had here script, defer, src, and the JavaScript file that is associated to Bootstrap. So we can do exactly the same thing with DJS. We just need the URL to the DJS file to importing. So in this case, since we don't have uh, a web browser providing all the page, but just the page open in the browser with files, and we are keeping things simple in a way, we are going to add the script here. So everything that the, bra the, the JavaScript needs to access, everything that this app.js file needs to happen, needs to import, or to use must be defined before that line in HTML. Hmm? So from here, if we want, we can access this. Hmm? We, we don't need the feature from Bootstrap, but if we want, we can access to those, the JavaScript feature, and similar things for the JS. Hmm? So here, 
we are going to write script defer src equal and now we need to the URL of this and the URL of this it's something that if you go on the DJS website and you go in the browser installation you see that you can either download the file and put it in your folder and import like a local file or if you have internet access you can import this in this way so this is the URL you can either copy the entire line or just the URL just add the fare if you copy the entire line and, and then if you use plugins etc you have other steps to do but we are just using the plain simple DJS uh, so we can just copy and paste the URL of the JS here. Hmm? Yeah. And since AppJS is loaded after, we should have access to the JS. So if we use it here, it's not a problem because it's already imported in this HTML file. Hmm? So right now, all the imports are in this HTML file. JavaScript imports, CSS imports, etc., are in the HTML file, and the JavaScript is loaded after, is executed after. So it's, it's not a problem because it has access to everything. Okay, then we can like create a main or the, the main part of our JavaScript file so we can create the exam list like we did uh, in the past and now we need to fill the exam list with the exams so we can do it in several ways uh, one way is to go here and say exam list dot list dot push etc for each exams the other way is just writing the exams here in this array new new exam etc and the third mate the third way it could could have been to have um, a method that we can call init that is responsible to initialize the table the list so we are going to do the same things in all the three methods, just adding exams inside the list of exams. Uh, we are going to do it inside these methods for one reason. The reason that is that if we need, in a few weeks, to get this information, not from code, but from a database, or from another file, or from something else, we just need to change the content of the method or replace that method with another method and everything else will remain the same so but they are equivalent in the end we need to create three exams and add it to the list inside the exam list so we can do it in this way um, so we can write this dot list dot push and here We are going to push the uh, exams. Hmm? So let me get the code of the of the exam that we have. Uh, new exam. We are going to add a computer architecture that is zero to goal, um, and is computer architecture. That were the same that we had in the table before, hmm? actually. And the table before we had. Uh, well 10 credits the date was 2022 february 01 and the score was 21. then we have another row so i'm going to create the same things we had in the table that we copy and paste so we had just three exams uh, one were computer architecture the other one was data science 01 SQM data science and the database technology 
um, that was eight credits it was passed 15 of February with 30 uh, and loaded and then we had uh, 0 to K PN that were computer network technologies and services we need courses with shorter name six it was 6 of February with uh, 26 So we are adding these three exams inside the list, essentially. Hmm? So now we have all the exam inside the list. Hmm? So what we need to do now is to get the exam and put it in the table. Hmm? So we can have, for instance, another this dot get all method uh, that's just do return this dot list for instance right and we can then here write exam list dot init and um, const exams equal exam list dot get all and now we can do fill exam table with those exams and we're going to create another methods for fill the table clearly um, so here we can create function, fill exam table, in which we need exams. Right? So what we are going to do here in this fill exam table? at least logically then what we need to do starting from one exam to fill the table starting from a list of exams to fill the table okay modify the dom is correct but a little bit more precise <laughs> so the, the first step is do something the second is modify the dom and the third step is Each element in the list creates a new element to general new elements. What do we need to create in a, ta a table row? With four, five table cell, table column. Hmm? So for each element in the list. Hmm? This already t tell you that for exam in exams, or you can use for each, uh, non in, uh, sorry, off. Or you can use for each, or you can use whatever you want to iterate. For each of them, because we need to repeat the same operation for each of them, so we are not going to write the same code 11 times, four times in this case, three times in this case. We just iterate, and for each exam, we are creating the row. Uh, we can uh, say const. Uh, exam element equal and let's create another method just to, to avoid uh, because here if you remember the slides if you remember what we said last last uh, hour we need to do create a, a table row add this attribute create a table column cell add the text then create another one then add the text then create another one etc 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 and then all of these append to the table body and so it will be a, a, a long method to do it manually mm? so here it will be very very long um, so we can have a create 
exam row. And then here we need to, so here, create tr, etc. for the selected exam. And then we need to add the tr to the table. So which table? So let's imagine that we're going to write the, the method to create the row, but how we can add it? An element, so exam element is an element, is an HTML element ready to be added to the table. Which table? Here, what do we write? We should write something like exam table dot append dot append uh, exam yell or something like this. What is this exam table? Yes, get, get by tag, get by tag name will get, give us an array with all the tables. So, so in this case, we just have one, and, but we have an array. Um, that is one possibility. So we need to use a method to get an element. So we can get all the tables, that is one in this case. But it's an array, so we need to pick the first element of the array. Uh, or better, we can give an ID, not to, to the table, where are we going to write the ID? To the table body. Exactly. And we could call it uh, exam table. So that we can get the table. Uh, is it clear why to the, to the table body and not to the table? Why? Yes, uh, but yes, but to, we add it to the table body because we, we can use other methods to add it in the right place, even if we add the ID to the table. So it's not technically impossible. It's just quicker because we gave the ID to the table, then we need to navigate the table until the body and then add it there. Instead, we know that we don't care about modifying the table head or editing the table per se. We don't need to have access to the classes to the table or to the uh, table head, etc. We, we don't want to have access to that. So if we just target the things that we need to edit, it's easier and quicker because we just operate on the things, on the elements that we want to modify. In this case, the table body. So the more precise target is the table body and we are going to target the most precise one because it's easier. So here, table body, perfect. And then here we will see if it's append, prepend, insert, adjacent, whatever. Um, okay. Uh, now we can do the function create exam row that get an exam like JavaScript and creates all the row actually. So here we have two ways of do this. One is the lengthy way and slow and slow for us, not for, for the browser. And the other one is the short and quick. I, I prefer the short and quick, but uh, because it's less line to write, but we are going to do the lengthy and slow before because we are going to exercise, we need to exercise a bit to understand DOM manipulation. So we are going to, with the normal DOM manipulation things, even if this means writing 20 lines of code. So let me call it uh, second way. So the second way that is the lengthy 
hmm, a way. It's creating the um, single elements. We are going to create one element at a time. Hmm? So, with patience. What do we need to create? What's the first thing we need to create in a, in, for, for creating a row? TR. So const tr equal document dot create element tr. Good. First thing done. Then, what do we need to create? We need to create wh which TD? We need to create a TD for date. Then one for exams, for one for credits, one for score, and one for action. We need to do it manually. Okay? So, TD for date. Const TD date. So we, we remember, since we are creating five TD, just add a name to which TD we're creating and operating to. TD date document dot create element TD. And we are quite lucky that we don't have classes IDs in this TD. It's just plain TDs, right? Uh, or at least. I delete the table. Hmm? So, then, what do we need? To, this is the TD. What do we need to put in the TD? Not an input because it's the, the things in the exam. Which text? The date. Okay. So td dot td date dot inner text because we are going to edit the text inside the, the td and the text is exam dot date dot format and we can format it uh, in the year, 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 month, month, day, day, hmm? or whatever format you, you prefer. Then, which is the third things we need to do with date? We created a TD object, we added the date, and now we need to append it, we need to add to the TR, not just append it, append as a child, because it's inside the TR. Hmm? It's not a sibling of the TR, it's inside the TR. Hmm? So TR dot append child TD date. Okay, so we create the container create the first element in the container, we give the properties, in this case it's just the text, maybe there is other properties, the class, the ID, the other attributes, if it's a link you have to define also the attributes, etc. and then you append the TD in the TR that is in the container. And now we are going to do the same identical things five times, other four times, for each the other elements. So, let me copy and paste this, since it will be really the same thing. So instead of tdate, we will have a td name that is always a td, and the inner text we will be instead exam dot name, right? And a pen child, and then. We need to do again the same thing. So now you see why this is the length and boring way. And after name, we have uh, uh, credits. Hmm? 
and credits, TD credits, TD in the right place maybe, TD credits, TD credits, TD credits, and the text is exam.credits. And one more time for score. Score, 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 and here it will be exam.score plus hmm? we have 30, 30 with Lode, so we need to account for Lode, this is in a separate, uh, in a separate parameter, in a separate variable within exam. Hmm? So we can say exam.lode. Um, then we can append an L, L or nothing. Hmm? So if load is true, we append L, 30 with load. If it's not, we just append the empty string that is nothing. Hmm? And then we need to append. And one, two, three, four, what we have, exam date, create score, and then we have the actions. Is everything right up to now? Yes? Maybe. And then we have the action. Hmm? Const td actions document dot create element td. What we are going to add in this td here? What we're going to write here? We need to add one button. If you remember it was a, a button um, with a specific ID and with a specific class because it was red. Hmm? So now I, I delete it, um, but we can open it from the, the previous week that's the same should be this one hmm? so we need to add this one that is the same three time hmm? we need to add this well, without td because we already have td we need to add that What we are going to write here? Opinions. Can we write inner text? Why not? Why not? It's right, no, but why not? <laughs> what happens if we write inner text, button, etc.? It printed it. We will see uh, in the cell minor button like text. That is not what we want. Because this is not text, it is HTML. So what we, we cannot use inner text. Since this is HTML, we can use inner inner HTML. And pass directly the HTML that we want as a string or a string literal as you prefer as a string in any format that is uh, available valid string in um, JavaScript and then up and child TD actions we call it and then what we need to do there's one last thing that we need to do. We created the row. We created the five elements in the row. And now we need to append it to the exam table that we still need to, to get. 
uh, but we, we will get in a moment. And so we need to return. We need to return TR that will have the TR with all the TD inside. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we will need to get the table. So this exam table mm -hmm. is document dot get element by ID and we call it exam table, exam minus table. We can also have written document.querySelector string hash exam table. So like this, document.querySelector table. This would be equivalent totally equivalent, the two rows. One is with a CSS selector, where you identify an ID in that way, and the other one is just targeting IDs. So let me say, like, alternative. But it's actually the same thing in this case. Okay, so in theory, we have done Yes. That one? No, that one is targeting the ID because there is this symbol. It's just me that I forgot to write exam table. If we want to target the table, it's just table without any symbol be up bef before. Hmm? If we want to target the class, Imagine that we have a class, it's dot. It's like in CSS. So here it's just me forgotten exam in front of table. But otherwise was correct. Other question? Was the same thing? Yes. Okay. So in theory, this should Uh, with the proper four, um, this should work. Hmm? So let's see. Hmm? So we have the table. We don't have the last element of the table hmm? uh, because it's always fixed. So it's not in the in the in the array. Hmm? Let's try to add it. So to make things a little bit more complex, I already, let me get it from the, that one. Let me get it from here. Just the, the Russell, yes. Yes. That's a good question. We should have. We actually should have done a pen child. Uh, if you look at the definition, um, append, insert a set of nodes after the last child of the element. So given that body was, table body was empty, it will add it in the right place. Uh, append child, they should be linked here somewhere, I hope. No. Append child. Add the node to the end 
of the list of child. So in some cases, the behavior is the same, obviously. In other, the append child is more specific. Okay, um, we are saying let's add this back to the, our table. This is static, the last static row. And let's see what happens. There is already an element, so we just append everything after that element. And it's not what we want. Right? So what we, if we want to have the static row in the end and add all these three just before that static row. Mm -hmm. So we would like to have a computer architecture, data science, computer network, and after this these static row that we added. So that is always at the end of the table. We cannot use append anymore. What do we need to use? Prepend. Because prepend added as the first node of the table. So if we use prepend, we are almost there. It could be acceptable, but we are almost there. Why we are almost there? Yeah, because prepend adds as the first node. So adds computer architecture, and then before computer architecture adds data science, and so they are in the different order that we, we had uh, before. Hmm? Uh, another alternative is hmm, using exam table dot uh, insert adjacent HTML saying that this is after begin and the element is always exam element. Hmm? That is one of the other many methods that you have. Um, not element. Um, element. Hmm? But the results are always the same because also after begin we'll add in the same way as uh, prepend. Hmm? These are just different methods. Hmm? Actually, we, we don't really care about the order. Maybe we are more interested in the date order than not in the random order in which is added in a list. Or we, we don't want to have this as the last element or the first. So it's up, up to you know, the developer and the designer of this page to decide which is the the visualization that they want. So in this case, we can approximate this in this way. Um, let me show you the first way, the other way, to create an exam row. Which could be the other way? It's shorter. And it's simple. Are we already no. No. Not the one. Because we, we still need to create a separated TDs, no? Even if we iterate. Yeah, we, we can have a, a four cycle here and then try to say, okay, in this case it's a date, so if it's the format in this way, in the, in the other case it's just text. 
So just put the text in the other one is the score, so add the load, and then we can keep the first and the third row, the append child and the create element similar. But still, we need to operate in format, uh, have, have some if hmm, that say, okay, is date, okay, format. Is not date and is score, then append the L. Uh, it's whatever else. It's, it's the button, so inner HTML. So we, we need, and then everything else is just, so created a name is just the text. Shorter than this, without four, is actually, you can start with return at this. You can actually start with the return, this line. So short it is. Then it will not one line, but. We can convert the element into strings. Almost. We can use inner HTML. Not here. Yes, but not here, but in the in the other in the other step. But to use inner HTML, what we need? If we want to use inner HTML, what we need? We need the HTML, right? The string with HTML. And so which is the, but it's a personalized string because there are some elements that are the same, TR and um, TR, NTDs are the same, but everything else is changing. Hmm? So what we can do here, we can create a string literal and use the HTML. So we can actually write TR. So if I would have keep the, 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 the HTML page, it would be easier. And we can go create a new line because we are in a string literal. Um, and so we write TD and this is exam.date.format So describe, so write the HTML in a um, procedural way. What do we want to have? A TR, we decide some TDs. So we're going to, to create those. And here, what we have, name. And then we have credits. And then we have <laughs> and a horse, no. And then we have score. So actually, this should be done in this way. And then we have the button that was already an HTML element. And so we can copy and paste from here. So we don't have the element, we have the HTML directly, but we can compose the, the HTML and then do insert HTML in the table three times in the right place. So it will not be inner HTML because otherwise every time it will be replaced with the same, with the, a lot of STR, but it will be append HTML, create adjacent HTML like we did here. Oh, sorry. So before we used uh, create adjacent element, we can use in this case create adjacent HTML and have the same results that we have because this is actually HTML. So these are actually equivalent. So the second way, the, the long way, is the classical way, and it's actually really DOM manipulation because we are manipulating the DOM line by line with the JavaScript method that we have. The first one, this one, is a shortcut. We are manipulating the DOM up to a certain level because at a certain point we say, well, this is the HTML, you have to put it, put it. We are creating a template 
for a single exam, fill the template and put the template as HTML in the page. So we are still manipulating the DOM, but with less, using less methods that are specific for manipulating the DOM. We just add HTML at a certain point, but the results are the same. And this can be mixed. So you can have some part in this way, some part in a shorter way, as you prefer. Even if, again, the second way, the longest way is the, what we can call it DOM manipulation because we are actually creating the elements, appending child, appending element, inserting, changing the inner text, et cetera, et cetera. So we are just using all the DOM methods to manipulate the DOM. The first one is a shortcut to do that. So let's call it um, classic way instead of second way. And we call it um, string literal. And, and this is possible thanks to string literal that allow us to have new lines and to also structure the HTML in a visually uh, nice way mm, instead of just having a lot of plus, plus, plus with string concatenation. Okay. What we need to do now? So again, if we want to use the template here instead of insert adjacent element, we can say insert adjacent HTML and we get the same result. So we can say that this is the, um, oh, it's called classic way, it is prepend, and the <coughs> string literal way is the insert adjacent HTML. Hmm? And if you see, And if we call the right methods, um, you see that I just commented out the long method, the first method, because they are the same name and the second one won. Okay, so we can, and I left a uh, this okay so let's comment this and let's keep the classical way running that hmm? again it's it's the same but at least we have the classical method hmm? okay what we need to do now we need to add an event listener to the button Right? We, we need to click this button and delete the row. Um, where we are going to add this event listener? The code. Where we are going to write the code? In which line? In which position? Here in the main, before the main, Inside in field exam table, inside create exam row, where we're going to add the event listener for the button. It doesn't matter any place, it's the same. So inside the create exam row. Do you agree? No. After fill exam table, inside or outside the method? Inside the fill exam table or just outside? After. After fill, inside or outside. Other?
yeah, after define the button. Okay, so if we add it here, after fill exam table, outside fill exam table, hmm, this doesn't work. It does not give us probably error, but it will not produce the, the right results. Because, because in this point, line 79, the table is empty. And the table is empty because we fill up the table in line 84. So we cannot attach an event listener to something that doesn't exist in the page. So we need to create that element or any elements that operate with something in the page after that this something in the page exists. So we can add it after the field exam table call, last line of the code. We can call it inside the field exam table if we want, but after, like the last line, so after appending it, after adding it to the page, because otherwise it's not working. And the best place to add it, since it's the same events for four buttons, for a certain number of buttons that we don't know how much they are, is close to button creation. So we create everything and we append the event listener to each button. Hmm? Uh, we can also pen, uh, add it in the field exam table, is not a problem. We can also have one um, event listener. Uh, but no, uh, no, actually we need four even listener because each delete button will need to delete the, s the right row, each row. Mm -hmm. So when we press these, we cannot cancel delete one random row. We need to de delete exactly computer architecture. And we, we need to delete this, we need to delete computer architecture, computer network. If we press the third one, we need to delete computer architecture and exactly that row. So that should be linked one another. So how do we link one another? We link one another, first of all, giving an ID to this button. So let me make this a string literal, because this button will now have an ID that will be something like um, exam, Sorry, exam minus exam.code. We need to associate univocally the exam to its ID. So that, that button will be actually four different button. And so we can say that um, TD button, uh, no, the TD actions dot add event listener which event listener, click. So we, this, we are creating this once per um, button. Mm? Uh, event, arrow function. Mm? What happens when we press that button? We can tr.remove. So since this is attached to this specific TD action, that is the specific TD action created before, so this is the event listener to this TD action, to the TD action of the exam with code one. And then we create a TD action linked to this button that is the other ID. And if we want to, to know, we can also write console dot log e dot target dot id hmm? at it we should print exam minus the code over the exam hmm? if you want to, to have a, a proof of this so if we try this and then we, we need to leave if we try this 
you see that I'm deleting exactly the row that I want to delete. And then if I refresh the page, everything comes back because this is not persistent. When we refresh, we reload everything, so we refill the table, we will recreate everything, so we start from scratch. And here in the console log, if we have a look in the console log, when we press the button, we see that the ID of the button that we press is exam minus 01s qm m. And that is exactly uh, the code of data science and database technology. Hmm? So since we need to add this button to this row, the best place is to put it when we create that TD object. Hmm? Otherwise we need to get the element by D and then adding the event listener to that element with the D after the creation of the row. If we want to do it in the field table, for instance function. Okay, one last thing to notice, we, we are not going to, to do here, but if you have, we, you are going to, to have this in the lab. So if you have a table like this, and you have filters, like you have in the lab. Hmm? So let's imagine that you have two filters, one for showing all the exams, another for showing the 2021 exam only. Hmm? When you press one filter, you fill the table, like we did. When you press the other filter, you fill the table. But before filling the table, you have to empty the table. Hmm? If you use the methods that we created today. Hmm? Because you start from an empty table, you have all, so you fill the table with all. Then you click on the 2021 filter. If you don't empty the table, you will append the 2021 exam after the exam that you have. And see, if you click on all and you don't empty the table, you will append again all after the all plus 2021. And every time you change the filter, you will continue to append thing, things in the table. Hmm? So when you have filter, the things that you have to do before filling the table, before changing the filter, is emptying the table so that you can fill the table with the right content, the content that you want to visualize. Okay, this is not something that we have here. We don't have filters. But in the lab, you have filters. So this is something that in the application that you created last time. So this is something to keep in mind for Thursday. OK, this close this lecture. Next week, we are going to start with React. And in the lab, you are going to experiment with DOM manipulation methods. Have a nice day.